live here for Transforming Detroit with the Global Opportunities Group and Dr. Princess Odelia. We have several people that are in the house today to represent Detroit and from the city of Detroit, this gentleman, I had the pleasure of just meeting him, but I'm going to try to get a job with him as the host of the Detroit Jazz Festival because I know I've, I've already gone to the interviews, I've already gone to YouTube. You haven't had a host. You have a bunch of people running around, but you need a host, Cornell. So the chief operating officer of the Detroit Jazz Festival held here in the lovely city of Detroit, Mr. Cornell. Hey, Cornell. Hey, how you doing? All right, I'm going to turn over the dais to you and let you do what you do. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great. I have the pleasure of reading the bio for um, John Conyers, Jr. Hold the mic. Hold the mic. Come on. Sorry. I have the pleasure of reading the bio for John Conyers, Jr. John Conyers, Jr. has served as United States Congressman for Detroit for almost four decades. As of 2003, he was the second most senior member of the House of Representatives, Democratic leader on the House um, Committee, and a leader of the Congressional Black Caucus. At the time of his 1964 election, he was the youngest African American elected to the United States House of Representatives. In each sequential election, he won with over 80% of the votes and has continued to work for social and economic justice for his constituents and the entire nation. Khan has achieved an impressive list of accomplishments during his career as U.S. Congressman. In 1967, he fought against a bill that would have delayed the redistricting of, of a congressional districts are going to re those areas to, uh, had a problem with the Civil Rights of America. Congress wrote and led to drive for the Martin Luther King Holiday Act of 1983. In 1988, he sponsored the Alcohol Warning Label Act, which requires clear labeling on, on alcohol or beverages. Congress also initiated the Justice Department National Study of Police Brutality and attached significant civil rights legislation to the 1994 um, crime bill. He also introduced numerous other bills to his constituents. The National Voter Registration Act, the Hate Crimes Act, the Victims Crime Act, the Violence Against Women's Act, the American, the American Health Security Act are just a few pieces of legislation in which Kanye has played a significant role. Kanye has served his community through his participation in numerous organizations he has served as trustee of the Martin Luther King Jr. Civil for Nonviolent Social Change, past director of the United Auto Workers Local 900, a member of the, Astor, uh, of the Council of the Michigan Civil Liberties Unit, General Counsel for the Trade Union Leadership Council, Vice Chair for the Council of Michigan Civil Liberties Unit, and a member of the Executive Board of Directors of the Detroit Branch of the NAACP. Thank you so much, Mr. Cornel Beatty. I want you to, um, right now, to stand here for one moment as we have a representative from John Conyers' office. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Congressman Conyers is a very significant part, I like to say, even for this youth movement. This is a global youth transformation movement. And Congressman Conyers, in a few interviews that I had the pleasure of doing with him, he said several times, I want to be a part of your youth program. And at the time, it wasn't that big. And I, I'm like, OK. And I believe that his energy of hope and what he visioned has really inspired this. And so I am very thankful for what he's done, because if it wasn't for John, Congressman Con John Conyers, we would not be here like this. He's that silent work in the office, in the White House. He has been there for, like we said, for decades. And he has served our communities for all of these years, and he's still going. The oldest right now in the White House, very um, the, one of the founders, the key founders of the Martin Luther King Day as we march every year for the dream. Well. In order for us to have the dream, it would not be where it is if it wasn't for U.S. Congressman John Conyers. So today, as 
Bountiful Opportunities Group heads the Global True Purpose team and also we have a mission of helping billions to reach their life's true purpose. We want to thank U.S. Congressman John Conyers for his contribution of excellence. We are awarding him with the Global Pioneer of Excellence in Community Leadership and for U.S. Congressman John Conyers. Thank you so much. And we want to thank all of you for believing in yourself and also keeping the dream alive through your energy of hope and expectation. We thank you very much. Now, Dr. Princess Odelia is not done for the day, okay? So we have, we have more presentations to do, and we have more joy that we're going to bring to Detroit as we transform. Um, I saw you didn't have no ring on your finger, Cornell, so I'm going to flirt with you later. <laughs> well, how old are you? Old enough to flirt with? Okay, we're going to continue. So I want to thank you guys. Some of you guys have done your vision boards and followed the, the lead that Dr. Princess Odelia and the Bountiful Opportunities Group has set forth here in Detroit for today, October 23rd. And if you guys don't, uh, I know Dr. Princess Odelia is going to show this, but uh, we, we came up with a, a form, a formula of of your vision boards for your transformation. And so this is the transformation vision board that we put together on the website for you guys to do. And we have some, we have, I don't know if we call them Detroitians. I don't know, what do you call people who live in Detroit? New Yorkers, we call them New Yorkers. So Detroitians, um, I'm gonna ask the young lady sitting in the, one lady sitting in the front, can you come up here with your vision board for me, please? This is just one of the people, of the many people that are here to transform Detroit. Uh, I'm Cassandra Calloway, and uh, we'll be hearing from me a little bit ooh, later. You know the devil is a liar, right? <laughs> so we're going to do this up. Okay. We're going to put this right there. What is your name? My name is LaShawn White. Okay, LaShawn White, we need you to give us some face in your voice. We're transforming Detroit today. What is your name? My name is LaShawn White. How you doing? I'm great. LaShawn, tell us about your vision board. My vision board is a rest in peace board for Oliver Lipscomb. Me and my boyfriend was um, being robbed and he pushed me out the way. He's my hero, but he's no longer here with us. My vision is to give the, the kids back their chance on these streets, for these parents to be parents, for the uncles to be uncles, aunts to be aunts, for us to love each other. Speak up, because if you don't speak up, it can be you. It can be you, it can be the one next to you, it can be your loved one. And that's why I'm here today, because I was born and raised in Detroit. I believe in Detroit and the streets were safe for me and I wanted to be safe for my grandkids now. I lost my best friend, my life partner. Uh, we work together every day, and I don't have that anymore. So we searching for its killers, and we searching for peace on our streets. Well, we hope that you get peace in your heart. Know that God has you. The pain that you're going through to lose a loved one in such a way, I pray for you. And the city of Detroit, we pray for. And let's we, we want to transform not just Detroit but the world because people are dying across the country by the hands of others, uh, robbing, stealing, things like that that we know should not be pillaging. You know, sometimes sometimes I think, you know, there's stakes burning. Like back in the day when they, when, what's his name, was running around on the horse, the British are coming, the British are coming, and there was no order, okay? You know, it was the red coats, the white, there was no order. So it's time for order, and it's time for them to find the killer of Oliver Lipscomb, and we want that. So if anybody out there has any information that can assist us with that, thank you, sister, for sharing your vision with us here at, at Thank you as well. My name is Cassandra Calloway, and we are going to be back with you in a few. We're going to continue to march and continue to rally here on October 23rd for the Global Historical Transformation Rally. Hey. Well, we, want, we want everybody to get excited, too, because at 12 noon, you guys can have it right there in front of you. Your uh, collective vision. At 12 noon. So at 12. We're going to give you agendas and tell you what, what and how you can follow what's going to go on from this point on. 
And what time is it now? We're reading. It's 11.57. So in three minutes. Yeah. I got three minutes. Y'all want me to tell three minutes of jokes or you want me to just. <laughs> he said. <that. laughs> so um, I'd like again, I'd say I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Princess Odelia for uh, inviting me to be the host for this global transformation tour and now i'm just going to put it out there i am the official host from this year fourth and the rest of the years coming so next year if you see someone else standing at this dais let's beat princess odelia down okay <laughs> uh what is your name zach. hey zach what transformation would you like detroit to see Come here. Come on up. We, I, I, yes, I also want to say, uh, while he's up here, this gentleman right here, let, 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 me, let, me, let me say, this gentleman right here has been so instrumental in building the awareness of this historical event today. And I just want to say thank you to you, Kurt. Thank you are amazing. I mean, I didn't even know that he wasn't feeling well, and I, I could just go on and on. I had no idea that he wasn't feeling well a lot of the time, and he still continued to move forward for this because of his vision of transformation for Detroit. And it's just, wait a minute, I, I, we should, who has a countdown? Because in about a few minutes, we're getting ready to do the reading collectively. We're going to say it out loud. Get on your Facebooks and Twitters. All of you got your little, little fancy phones. Get on your Facebooks right now and tell them it's a countdown till we start to read the vision of transformation for Detroit. Okay, I want you to tell, tell us again what, well, no, you don't have time to tell us anything right now. Okay. <laughs> in one minute, we're going to have you back later on. We are just having us a great time. Okay, so... Um, all right, is it countdown? My son is, is, is on, he's involved from where he is in Georgia. We want to say hello out there to Georgia, hello out there to Africa. Hello. We see you guys. When we say global, we meant global. They're around the world. I'm going to pull this Skype up and, okay, ah, it's 12 o'clock. Where you going to be? Okay, now let's hear. Everybody, you, got, you have your vision in place, your, the, the Detroit vision in place? All right. All right, everybody, you have it. You have it, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good. Here we go. Starting with number one. This is the vision of Detroit that we want you to align with. The collective vision for Detroit, a solution for Detroit that involves the world. Okay, we will align with your vision and transformation for Detroit. Okay, the great news is if you align with Detroit, the vision, Detroit will align with you and your vision. So, number one, Detroit is the pioneer in the movement of global transformation. Let's say it together. Detroit is the pioneer in the movement of global transformation. Let's say that again because this is the first one. Detroit is a pioneer in the movement of a global transformation. All right. Number two, Detroit is the, the safest, safest cities, cities in, in the world. world. Let's say that again. Detroit, Detroit is, is one of the safest cities in the world. world. Number three, Detroit, Detroit communities are beautiful, full of happy citizens, citizens chill, adults and youth, youth who, who are, are living their true, true purpose. purpose. Let's do that one more time. Detroit's Detroit communities are beautiful, full of happy citizens, citizens adults and youth, youth who are living their life's true purpose. Now, number four, and let's get this right. Detroit is the number one tourist city in the world. Let's say it again and say it proud. Detroit is the number one tourist city in the world. If Detroit can do it, anyone can. Transformation, it is so. Let's say it, wait, let, we, we gotta do that one more time. We gotta get loud and proud. If Detroit can do it, Anyone can. If Detroit can do it, anyone can. Transformation, it is so. Transformation, it is so. Transformation, it is so. Align with this. You know what? We, we, let's, do the, let's do the one man can change the world song. 
think it's Kay, the I, perfect time. I what think. Before we do. Dude, okay. Don't do it. Well, we gotta do it without the. We gotta do it without the. We gotta do it without the cussing. He doesn't curse. He don't. Okay. He don't, okay. They okay, just Okay, just making sure we because just make sure we pull up the unedited version. Yes, and okay. Sean is from Detroit. Detroit. I do want to say what um, a message came in from General Kaburu uh, Musafari, and he has a message uh, regarding Congressman John Conyers and regarding this movement. He said, Hi, I'm unable to log in and drop a line because um, of some connections there. But he said it's an outstanding, he said U.S. Congressman Conyers and this movement is an outstanding profile and public service, both civil and military. And he said he has always been in awe of any person that was visibly there during the civil rights period. And that's what he has a message to U.S. Congressman John Conyers. And he said that He's very, very, very pleased that this is going on, and he supports the transformation of Detroit. And so we want to say hello to General Kaburu of Nigeria, Nigeria, and thank him for being here virtually. We also want to uh, say thank you. Let's put Ricky on. Ricky on speaker. Are That's we, my son. He's in Georgia. And we're in Georgia, so we're from Africa to Detroit to Georgia. Hey, Ricky, what you got to say? Transformation in his soul. <laughs> you got to say it louder. Say it louder. Transformation in his soul. <laughs> okay, we got it all the way from Atlanta. What other what other things would you like to say to the beautiful people that are sitting in the room right now, Mr. Ricky? I am so excited. I'm down here and I see that, you know, people are so ready. They're, you know, getting themselves together. Um everybody's putting in towards what they see for their own lives. So I'm really, really excited to see the change already happening. Well, Ricky, I'm upset that I came all the way to Detroit and you're in Atlanta, so I'm gonna have to chase you to Atlanta the next time I come. You're gonna have to get me, oh goodness. I'm sorry, Sandra. <laughs> well, transformation is so. We're gonna let you continue to count down while you're in Georgia and we're gonna continue the press conference here. I'm gonna pass you off to your mom. As I continue to say, guys, Detroit is a city that needs change and will, we will change. And we're going to have more to say in a few. So we're going to be right back with the Transformation is So rally and march. And, and I know Dr. Prince Odea has a lot to say. Well, do we want to, we're, are we, do, we're just going to keep going? We're going to do one man can change the world. If you want to, let's, 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 do you want to do this first, but. It's up, let's, okay. Let's, let's, no, 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 no. You what, guys want to dance. Yeah, in, in one minute. In one minute. Celebrating the transformation of Detroit, of you, for our youth, for our communities, and the world, in spite of whatever anybody says. It is so. And it only takes one person. You heard the song, One Man Can Change the World. So you don't. Well, we didn't hear the song. You didn't hear the song. Well, okay, well, yeah, well, you will hear the song in, in just two minutes flat. Two minutes flat, I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so listen. You see this, you see this board? This here is the, the vision board template for all of us, okay? And if you go online, the, uh, the, vision, um, the vision outline of how, how to create a successful vision and plan for your life so that you can actually come into that fulfillment, it's online. Just go to IamTransformingDetroit.com and I want you to click uh, the create vision, this vision board and marching banner. Because next year, we're going to do it big, and we're going to block off the streets. So what this is doing is igniting the, the whole movement to this vision creation, okay? This is the solution. It is. So right here, what we have, everybody, hold up your vision boards. Oh! And later on, we're going to have a picture with you guys standing here. We want vision boards there. All right. All right. Now, we believe that. There is the vision for you, the vision for our youth, the vision for our community, and the vision for the world, okay? The vision that we talk about in this creation, it's important for you not to be, not to allow doubt to take over when you're creating your vision board. It's important for you to understand that when you write 
wh whatever it is that you see, in, like you guys are wanting safe streets. That means now that you've written the, the, the vision there, it's your responsibility as the visionary of this to no matter what you see, don't give negative thought to those things that you see. You're, go you're going to see a lot of injustice before you see the whole transformation of what you want to see. So it's important for you to, s to not give energy to that stuff, but every time you see that negative stuff, don't you cancel every negative thought you have and you say, but there is justice, there is peace, and we have taken back our streets. You see how I reversed that? You see how I said that? So now you're saying what you want. I don't care what it looks like because life is much deeper than what you see with your physical eye. Please understand that. So it's up to you to create that vision and make it clear, okay? So we're excited about that. Can we say, transformation, it is so. And it's one man can change the world. One man can change the world. Hello. <laughs> Come on in. Transformation, it is so. You're beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so we want you to get your vision boards, put them up high in your homes, in your businesses, wherever you are, and stand on them every day. Look at the board. Say it. I want you to feel it. Everything that you've created, I want you to, if, if you want to be an, an astronaut, somebody would say, oh, that's crazy. You'll never be an astronaut. If you see yourself as an astronaut, then doggone it, you're an astronaut. And guess what? For you aligning with the vision of Detroit, we're aligning with you. And we, you've got a lot of positive energy going towards your vision. And we're saying, hey, he's going to be the astronaut of the world. And, and it is so. Am I right? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Transfer. So, the, yeah. so the transformation, my, um, I would, didn't have the opportunity. I tried to carry my vision board with me to uh, Detroit. And it wouldn't fit in the one bag that I was trying to bring because, you know, I'm only here for 48 hours. But my vision board in, in Los Angeles has, where it says transformation, <laughs> It says, the Cassandra Calloway Show. And about some 30, 40 weeks ago, I made, started transforming myself and my show that I've been doing for six years on Blog Talk before having a conversation with Dr. Princess Odelia and this whole global transportation movement, trans transformation movement. And when I realized that we were so aligned, not just being friends, but aligned in where we're moving to. So for me to see my vision board from 30 weeks ago, and there are only three things on my vision board. The top line says the Cassandra Calloway Show. The second line says in studio, because I've been doing my show from home. And the third thing is a Samsung 6 <laughs> picture of a Samsung phone. Those are the three things that are on my vision board, other than motivational things, but as far as what I ask God for. October 3rd, the Cassandra Calloway Show launched on rmconair.com. On Blog Talk, I started off with 96 listeners. On RMC, I started off with 110. And on Saturday, we'll be doing tomorrow. Where the reason why I have to leave immediately is because tomorrow I have another show. Plus, I want the rest of my world to see all the incredible things that we're doing here. So to have a picture of myself, my show name. Now, the only thing that's on this board that I have not gotten yet is the Samsung 6. Okay, so Samsung... <laughs> We need, a Samsung. we need to be sponsored by Samsung so we can get some of these phones and some other stuff doing. So I said that to say that it is so when you put it down in writing, when you ask God in writing, and when I say ask God, I mean truly ask God for what you want. Some of us say, oh, God, I want this and I want that. That's not it. I'm talking about getting on your knees and praying until your knees are sore, until, there's, you, know, until you have scabs and blood. Not physically bleeding, but if you have to physically bleed for what your dream is, if you have to physically bleed for what your heart is, then you have to do so. And I'm not talking about going out. We're not talking about these people 
shooting us and killing. That's not the physical bleeding I'm talking about. I'm talking about bleeding the blood of Christ. And when I mean the blood of Christ, I mean the blood that is going through your veins to do what you're supposed to do because God is leading you to that place. Now, you're not talking, I'm not sitting here, I'm not a Bible-toting, Jesus Christ, rich sister type of person. That's not me. I do what I do and I say what I say, but I talk to you because you understand me because I'm real. I've done things that I'm not supposed to do, and I will probably continue to do things that I'm not supposed to do. But because I pray and I ask God for guidance to lead me in the direction of which I'm supposed to go and not be tempted by that guy over there with his shirt off, <laughs> this guy over there with that, you know, without the temptations of the world. So once you truly close out the temptations of the world and put in the temptations of what God is giving you, truly, trust me, you can get and receive whatever your heart's desires. Now, for us to have the peace that we need in Detroit, we all have to align. It's not just us that are in this room. It's everybody. We all have to, and it's not just Detroit. New York, Los Angeles, I feed the streets once a week in Los Angeles, and I'm doing two and 300 sandwiches, and that's just me by myself or with some friends. But if we collectively get together, collectively, not just say, okay, I'm gonna do this, and you go all your separate ways. We collectively join together and band together in every city, just like Ricky is. And Ricky, I know you're still there, right, Rick? No. Okay, you see, I was just wondering, you know, I couldn't get you a person, so I'm just touching the phone like you right here. Um, and he's in Georgia, and we have people in Los Angeles, and we have people in New York. All of us are being aligned with the same movement. So the first thing you have to do is trust yourself. And trust and believe that what you ask the universe and God to give you, you will receive. Now, this is not my speech. I'm just felt a moment, you know. Do I go into my speech or we can continue in or do you want? We can go and go ahead and go ahead. We can do, we're going to just walk. Well, well, first, we're going to do one major change. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to play the, uh, we're going to play, we're going to play the uh, Sean, uh, what is it? Big Sean. And, and ask prayers go out to him. Remember just recently he had a really bad accident. He could have died. He's still here. One man could change the world. So we're going to hear the song. We have bagels and coffee. And then we're going to come back with the continuation of this incredible movement that we're here to do today. And I might tell some jokes. I might, I might, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm working on a new routine for the, the improv. And I got a whole thing about it wasn't easy getting to 50. So we're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see if some, hey, y'all laughing. Let me tell you something. I had a hot flash right before we walked up here. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the house. In, in my room in the hotel, and I'm just waiting for my limo to be picked up to come here. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, why do I feel dizzy? All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, snap, man, I thought I was done with the hot flashes. You know what I'm saying? Because when, when you get to be my age, and, 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 and here's the deal, it's winter here. I have no winter clothes. And to be in a short sleeve shirt and with no bra and drawers on, and it's hot, and I'm about to pass out, I just want you to know <laughs> that hot flashing ain't easy, okay? And you laughing, but you too will be here one day. So, okay? And, and I know Dr. O, and I have another friend. Don't put this on me. I, my friend came to the house the other day. She's like, ask me for some stuff. I was like, girl, I ain't had them seasons in, in seasons, you know? But there might be something in there. I'm, I don't know. Do they expire or something? It's just, to, just make sure they work. You know, the fact that your stuff is working in mine ain't, I'm not mad at you because <laughs> I'm not trying to have no babies where would the cute guy go Cornell I'm not trying oh he's like oh he left the room I'm sorry I'm not trying to have any babies he had to, he had to probably go to his wife like yo there was some, uh, some girl up there trying to hit on me but we're going to transform Detroit we're going to transform the world and we're going to be right back with you so do you have you got that song for me she's coming up with big shots so I'm gonna keep telling you so it wasn't easy getting to 50 Okay, actually, I'm doing a do-over, do-over 50th birthday party on December 4th. If you're in Los Angeles or if you want to come to Los Angeles, you've got to find your own hotel. We've got to hook up with the Marriott, and because uh, we got Marriott hookup, right? We're going to hook up with the Marriott, but I'm doing a do-over, do-over birthday party because my first 50th birthday party was kind of whack. When I say that, I, you know, me, I expect a bunch of people here. So the three people showed up. I was like, well, you know what? This ain't working. So I'm going to do another party. So my friend Joe's like, yo, I heard your birth 50th birthday's coming up. Let's do another. Yeah, I haven't had a party. So we go to the second party. I have a dress that changes 50 different ways. I'm like, so I'm changing dress. All of a sudden, all these chicks keep hitting on me. I'm like, what the heck is going on? But what happened was 20 minutes before that, have you ever had a songgasm? Have you ever heard a song that when you hear this song, it just makes you go, oh, that's my song. Like, oh, they're like. I would get in. Well, Jaheem's Just In Case is that song for me. 
And so I heard Justin Case come on, and I looked to my peripheral like where that tree is right there, and I see a thug. Now, I'm not a thug type of chick, as you can see, but I'm like, I'm 50, and I might want me a little thug love. So I look over there, and his saggy pants, do-rag, nappy braids coming from the back, plaid shirt, just standing there. And I'm like the song, I walk over, not walk over, I dance over. So I'm here, my just in case, I get over there, I walk up to the dude, I'm like, come on, pull him on the dance floor, we get up there, and y'all know the song, right? Just in case, I don't make it home tonight, I'm gonna make love to you like it's the last night. Well, I was dancing with him like it was the last night. I just encased it up. I just, the true purpose, we just transformed it up. Dance is over. Say thank you, get off the dance. That's a dance to me. Look, you know you can dance with some people. But I'm dancing, I'm like this, yeah, just in case. I'm going to get it on. 20 minutes later, I'm standing in the bathroom changing. And this girl's like, you're beautiful. I'm like, thank you. Uh, you got a girlfriend? Uh, no. You want a girlfriend? No. And it's like, I'm, you know, thank you, but I'm, you know, I'm only into, into men. So as I go up to the bathroom, I'm talking like, some other things are happening. I'm like, what is going on? Well, it wasn't until the next day, literally the next day, we're at the Four Seasons recapping the party, and I'm going, well, what's going on? Why? Why were all these girls hitting? I've never had chicks hit on me before. And I mean, I'm a tomboy. To, 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 so I can see why it's quite possible. Maybe short hair, New York. She walks like a dude sometimes, maybe. Maybe, I can see it. Sitting there thinking, and I realize, the thug I danced with, it wasn't a thug. I danced with a girl that didn't know it. Let me tell you, I didn't know it was a girl for, for 24 hours. It wasn't a, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, when the, when the, when the, when the Jesse K song comes on now, I look, I send my crew out, I do a pat down, I make sure, because I have to put myself back in the closet that I took myself out of. So now I'm having a do-over, do-over birthday party on December 4th at Baca, okay, 40, 74, 71, Melrose Boulevard, and, and I will not be dancing with chicks. Matter of fact, when I go out now, I have a team, I have an advanced team, my advanced team, they put stars, you see, because I'm also blind. I have one contact in right now, because if I put both of them in, I can't see these little smartphones that they have now, so I can't read and text and Instagram and go, I danced with a girl and didn't know it. I can't do that. So I send out my advanced team of Ernest, Terry, and Jackie with little buttons. One is a pink button and a green button. So you know those are dots? So if I'm walking through the club and I see a green dot, I know that's a guy. And if I see a pink dot, I know that's a girl. So that's how we doing it now. So if you turn 50, you can't see, you're trying to get some thug love, make sure you get your team to go out there, do a pat down, and make sure you dancing with a dude before you go out there and won't have to do a do-over, do-over. Because here's the thing, I don't think I can do a do-over, do-over, do-over 50th. So on December 4th, thanks to Roland Worth, come to my do-over, do-over. I'm not gay, I put myself back in the closet, 50th birthday party, for Cassandra Calloway. That's what we're gonna do, so. Um, and let me know if you like that joke. I know I might have to slim it down a little bit because you only get three minutes of the improv. So, <laughs> so that's how we're doing it. So, um, I can use some water and then I can go into, we're gonna, uh, do, I, do I have my song? I really need my song because if I hit just in case, I know what's gonna happen, right? You know? I'm gonna say hit that just in case and just gonna start dropping down to the flow. And, and, um, if you're watching on Periscope, I want to say hello. If you're on Facebook and Instagram, make sure you put up your transformation boards. It is so, can I get some water please, or that coffee over there? Just, um, and then we're gonna continue with our program. Hey handsome, welcome to the Transformation Rally. It's we have some people from the mayor's office and we're gonna actually redo, we're gonna read, then we wanna pound into you guys the, the transformation and change and the vision that we have for Detroit, again, with the mayor's office and then we're going to continue. I want to say hello to everybody on Periscope. I want to say hello to everyone on Facebook, Instagram, and all the people here in the room today for the transformation annual, fourth annual Global Transformation Tour of Detroit. So, once again, right, so it's Cassandra Calloway, and finally, an effective solution for Detroit's youth community and transformation. 
uh, we've already had the, from the office, John Cryer's office, but we're also going to have support, or we have support for this event from the mayor's office. And to do this, e to do events like this, and to have support, not only from the community, but from the politicians, and 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 that's very important because a lot of the politicians run, well, politicians run the world, and we know money runs the world, and we know that Detroit needs a change in the way the government and things are looked at and how money is uh, passed down. And with the mayor's office or the mayor that's in place now, changes has definitely been made. So we're going to have a representative from the mayor's office come up, and he's going to also, once again, we're going to delve in and say again so you guys understand what we want and how we want to transform Detroit. Uh, they just, okay, from the mayor's office, and let me get the name because I have the name right here. Mayor's office is Re Reggie Red. Yeah, the mayor's office is Reggie Red. Well, thank you, thank you. See, that's, that's, that's how we do it here in Detroit. Detroit is so down that if the host from LA don't know who's running Detroit, then the people like John who's running Detroit is telling me who's doing So I got Reggie Reg, Reggie Reg, and I know your mama didn't name you Reggie Reg, so well, is your name Reginald? Reggie? What's your last name? Oh, well, excuse me. I guess John had it right. Reggie Reg Davis from the mayor's office. Come on, Reggie Reg. And welcome to Transformation. It is so here in Los Angeles. So what we're going to ask you to do, we want you, we're trying to make sure everybody understands how we're trying to transform Detroit. How long have you been in the mayor's office? I've been in the mayor's office for, uh, see, he's been in office for the last, nearly, going on two years. It's four-year term, and he's uh, nearly halfway there, so um, going on two years. Now, electing this mayor was a big, was a feat, like, to get this particular mayor in, am I correct? Yeah, was, uh, the first uh, white man in office as mayor in the city of Detroit in the past 40 years. So uh, it, it was a record-breaking uh, accomplishment uh, just, just to come in office the way he did. And uh, right now he's, uh, we're breaking a lot of records through his leadership um, as far as um, uh, looking at the city of Detroit and the population that was taking a downward spiral um, for the past 20-plus uh, years. Um, as a matter of fact, in the past 10 years, we, we've lost nearly 250,000 people unheard of, one of a kind in the country. So we've started to stagnate that number and fix up all the blighted homes around the city and move young families in and, and it's starting to stagnate. And, uh, and shortly we'll start to see a, an increase in, in our population in the city and that's all thanks to the mayor and, and uh, his, his partners. Do you think that he can do it in the four years? Because I, I feel that it's, not, it's going to, to, to have the mayor that you have to, for the transformations that he's done in the short period of time, and everybody in Detroit's not liking him, and that's not just because he's it's because of the color of his skin and the fact that Detroit is such is a predominantly African American city. Can we get four more years? Well, it, it's not. You said something about majority of Detroit not liking him. Um, he won by majority of vote, uh, which says that the majority of Detroit actually do like him. Um, one that doesn't like a person would, would would most likely not vote for that person. Um, so you have to have some belief in, in, in what he does. No, I should so. say, they don't like government as it's been. I shouldn't say him. They don't like the way the government is running. Absolutely. And this is a great sign, the way that he came in. And uh, instead of being what some people thought uh, would be a guy who was going to come in and say, hey, we're going back to slavery and we're going to do all this crazy st stuff. He was a guy who came in and it, was, it, was, it wasn't about um, what you see and the color of his skin. It was about, you know, let's all imagine where Stevie wanted to close your eyes and just, just listen to his vote and the way he, uh, he leads this th th this city, so I think it's a great thing. And as far as what you guys are here today doing, uh, it, it all works together. You talk about Detroit being one of the safest cities in the world, um, and in the past uh, 20, 30 years, we're very infamous for violence. Uh, the top uh, top two or three for many years. As a matter of fact, number one murder capital many years. Uh, top uh, five on lists like. Um, the, the most dangerous city, kids killing kids, et cetera. Uh, we are no longer that. And we're coming, we're starting to go away from, from that. And uh, I think in, in a sh and it's going to take time. It will take more than two more years. But I think uh, in a still short period of time, Detroit will, will start to be on, number one on lists like the greatest city in, in this country and, and then one day the greatest city in the world. And we've got to get Detroit on that Forbes list. So I'm going to let you once again give our collective vision for Detroit. Reggie, Reg. All right. All right, Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, 
you want to read from here? Read from here to here, and then, no, I'm going to read from yeah. here to here, and then you read. Okay. Okay. okay, so first, a collective vision for Detroit, a solution for Detroit that involves the world. Will you align with the vision of Detroit and of transformation for Detroit? We have great news. If you align with Detroit's vision, Detroit will align with your vision. Have you created your vision board yet? Here's that template. So come on, Reggie Reg. He's gonna, we're gonna follow Reggie Reg's lead, starting off with number one. Okay, so repeat after me. That's how we're gonna do this? Yep. Okay. All right, ready, everybody? Here we go. Detroit is the pioneer in the movement of a global transformation. Yeah, reading it together. Here we go, number two. Detroit is one of the safest cities in the world. Three, Detroit's communities are beautiful, full of happy citizens, adults, and youth who are living their life's true purpose. Number four, Detroit is the number one tourist city in the world. If Detroit can do it, anyone can. Transformation, it is so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reggie. Right. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Now, wait a second. You can't walk away now, Reggie. You know why? I just found out we have some things in common. You're a, a, a DJ personality? That's how you got your start? LA is my second home. Theo from the 90.3 to beat. Uh, Trey Black, um, uh, Big Boy. All those cats. I worked at KJLH, uh, Stevie Wonders, Kindness, Joy, Love, and Happiness, 102.3 FM, Inglewood, California, uh, 1993 to 95. Uh, actually, that's actually when I left Los Angeles. But I actually do a lot of work with KJLH, and I actually absolutely. just hosted the Taste of Soul. They had yeah, me going around soul, that, uh, right on, on, on Crenshaw Boulevard. Boulevard. Yep. We had half a million people out. LA is my, my home. That's my second home. I know it very well. well I can't so, wait till you come to Los Angeles yeah, and grace my studio. Absolutely. I love to be there. When I land, I'm going to come straight to you. Well, here's the deal. When you land, don't land at five o'clock in the morning. Right. Don't okay. Don't 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 do don't do do me like Doctor O did and have me leave Los Angeles at five o'clock in the morning. You can't even get a train at five o'clock in the morning to get to. Do you have a friend that will take you to the airport right, right, at yeah, five o'clock in the morning? Okay. Thank you so very much, Reggie. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, it was good. You got a ring on your finger? No, no, no. Okay. Hey, hey, look. I said I'm coming back. I told you guys I'm coming back to L.A. with a man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Look, let's tell you something. Detroit East Coast men, East Coast men are different than West Coast. The guys in LA, they looking in the mirror more than I am. Okay, so I want a man's man. I want a I want a D I want I want one of these Detroit car building. You could call them at two o'clock in the morning if you lock your keys in your car and they'll come and get you out. I need one of those building cars if the if the if the stick if the sink gets stopped up I don't need to use a plunger I'm looking for one of those Detroit type of men that could pay the bills that's the type I'm looking for I want some I want some real Detroit you understand that's what I'm looking for before I leave up out of here so applications send them to info at CassandraCalloway.com that is info at CassandraCalloway.com please attach a picture and Random Manning Johnson, Ernest Sewell, Jacqueline Price, and Terry will go through those pictures and make sure. It ain't about looks. It's just that yo can't have a gut. Your six pack, you can't be laying in my six pack that I'm working on a 12. So it's, <laughs> it's transforming Detroit here in Los Angeles. My name is Cassandra Calloway. You're watching on Periscope, uh, Facebook, Instagram. We say welcome to this global extraordinary move. I have learned through doing a live show now on rmc.com that you just continue to talk and ignore whatever else is going on in the room because nobody else knows and you just keep doing the show. So, collective vision for Detroit. Number one, once again, Detroit is the pioneer in the movement of global transformation. Number two, Detroit is the safest city in the world. Number three, Detroit's communities are beautiful, full of happy citizens, adults, and youth who are living in their true life purpose. Number four, Detroit is the number one tourist city in the world. If Detroit can do it, anyone can. Transformation, it is so. Once again, transformation, it is so. And um, vision boards held high. Instagram tweet, if you're watching on Periscope right now, give me hearts, give me hearts, give me all the hearts. I'm trying to get to, let's say, 10,000 hearts before I leave Detroit, which will be at 1245. I've done turnarounds before, but this is the quickest turnaround in life. At least I'm not leaving at 5 a.m. 
and I'm leaving at 5.45 p.m. in the middle of traffic. Not only, not only, that, just think about this, y'all. Just think about this. Not only did she have me come in at 5 o'clock when there was no traffic, no cabs, no buses, no cars, but now she has me leaving in the middle of traffic at 5.45 on a Friday. Now, I expect the mayor's office to have a police escort for me, Reggie Reg. Uh, Reggie Reg. Reggie Wedge, did you hear me? I need a police escort because when this is over, I do want to go somewhere and have some great Detroit food. Not, and listen, when you tell, I'm going to hold you to your word, Detroit, because right now your food, yeah. <clears throat> I went to a place, they said they're supposed to have the best wings. If salt is a part of chicken, then they got the, the, that part of the wing right, okay? Because it was more, I mean, and I have high blood pressure, and I take medication. But one bite of this chicken set my high bite. I could, you, you know how you know when the food is too salty? When the hair on the back of your toes and neck stand up. Okay, so I want to eat some real, I don't want no salty chicken. What would you suggest, Reggie Reg? Where do you want to take me, Reggie Reg? There's a lot of places we can go? Okay, we have, I'm, I'm already checked in, so you know, I'm, you know, I'm, and I, I, look, she, look. This is how she work you. Five o'clock in the morning, get here, land, two o'clock, do an interview. Next thing you know, I got back to the house. At midnight, at midnight off of a, two, a 5 a.m. flight. I'm not going to tell y'all shh, that we were locked out the car for two hours. Shh. I'm not going to tell you we had to call Jeff Rowe, the mobile, to get over there and get a, and get a, and get a, what a, a jimmy slap or whatever that thing is to get the car out. <laughs> and now we're <laughs> no no no, we ready no to go? No yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm stopping you before you continue. Oh, oh, you see, I can tell this all on my show. I'll say this for the Kasadi Calloway show. So we're gonna go. Let's go. We're transforming Detroit. I was just, I was just doing time. You now you on ready? Yeah, because you're telling, you're telling everything. I, I, I did. I, I locked my keys in the car, and she was. So but happy. you know what? I didn't know. But you know what it is? But we made happy. You know what it is? Because she's transforming. What I'm gonna ask you guys to do when I leave is to slow her down. Okay? That's what I'm gonna ask. Them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in charge, please, of making sure that this lady slows down. Just a little. I'm going to tell you some more of the sponsors, but before we go any further, we're going to have another gentleman come to the podium who is. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I got you. I'm on, I'm on. I got my schedule. I got my. Uh, okay. Ooh, okay. Um, you see, she's over here side producing like I'm not on time. The next, the next person coming to the podium to help celebrate this infamous transformation of Detroit is his name. His name is Herb Strathers, and Herb. And Herb Strathers will be talked about by Dr. Princess Odelia. But he is part of uh, the group JP1, and he's going to give us a powerful story called, no, well, that's what it says, JP1 on here. No, you, you missed the other page. No, he's Strathers. He, he's paid by JP1. Strathers had a D. I'm not going to take back the D, <laughs> okay? I'm going to keep the D, and I'm going to pass it to Mr. Strathers so he can take back the D here in Detroit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the, the Herb Strathers and, and, and the... introduce him um, Herb Strather if anybody has been very 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 instrumental in Detroit and its urban development is Mr. Herb Strather I want you to give him a round of applause the building that we are having this event in where we did our March today this is all made possible because of Herb Strather Herb Strather is an expert urban developer who had a vision from the beginning that transformation, that, that his life was going to be instrumental in sowing seed back into the community. And he had it as a little boy. And as a little boy, his vision was actually rejected by many of the elders who felt that he was dreaming too high. And then after he felt like, no, I'm going to do it anyways. He moved on to actually do exactly what he said he was going to do. And he joined the Optimist Club, and, and through that vehicle, he was able to give over a million dollars back into the community at first at a very young age. So no matter what you vision, no matter who tells you it can't be done, bottom line is, Transformation, it is so for you, so long as you believe it yourself. And regardless of what anybody says, 
it's never too big. Because if you even thought about it, it's bigger than that anyways. Bottom line. So when we read the vision of Detroit, understand that. Now, take back the D. I want us to go into take back the D because take back the D and, and Strather Academy also, um, he's the founder of, but we're going to talk about take back the D because it's a very, very um, important instrument for the community's advocacy support. Take Back the TD is a nonprofit organization founded by, founded by Herb Strather just a couple of years ago with the mission to address the scrappers, criminals, and thieves, and also for him to address the banks. We have to talk about why are the communities blighted? Why? So I've had the, the great pleasure of directing Take Back the D since its founding. And there has been a lot, a lot of work legislatively behind the scenes that we've been working on, and it's actually going into place. We've got Scott Benson, who is our sponsor from City Council. We have City Council Legal, who is actually right now working vigorously on the plan that we've come to, to realize is exactly what we can do to make it happen. And we're going to come back. Herb, Herbert Strather has every plan, and he's going to make it where it's real big so that you guys understand the scrappers and the criminals and thieves, your day is over. Can I look into the camera? The day is done. It's over. Because now we're doing what is necessary to address it. No more where we have to worry about our properties being blighted. That's what's going to happen. And as we stand in this vision, then we know that everything that we have agreed to and planned to for the legislation is going to come to pass. I want to introduce, this is Herbert J. Strather. See, I'm telling you, it's so much, I couldn't just stop. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. Odelia. I think she said everything. And thank you all very much. Good. Oh, did there something else for me to say? Oh, I thought, no, no. I thought she said everything. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, well, listen. First of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate Cassandra for coming here to our great city and for all of you who are willing to come out today to support a transformation, a new vision for the city of Detroit. Uh, I, am, I am, in fact, a youth advocate. Uh, and in order to make life better for our future and for our children, we as adults have to take action now. We cannot allow those people who will harm our city to run rapid. One of the things that happen are scrappers that get up on the roofs and they take the uh, HAVC, they go into the homes when they're vacated, they steal the furnaces, and we do nothing. We know where these shops are at. There are at least a dozen shops around the city. They got three or four hundred furnaces in them. Where did they get those furnaces? They got them because they gave somebody $50 or $100, and they'll sell them for two or $300. Um, <clears throat> we have businesses that have been ripped off. I've been ripped off about 12 times. Now, normal people would just move out of the city. But if we took that path, everybody would be gone. So we decided to dig in and say, no, we're not going to move out. We're going to dig in. So we've started Take Back the D, takebackthed.com. And we're asking you to go there and support it. Just, I don't care if it's five dollars, if it's a dollar, whatever it is, we'd like for you to support it so we can take a firm position in helping in our city. Um, I, I am, like a, uh, Dr. Odelia said, a youth advocate. I've built optimist clubs. I've built 144 optimist clubs in the world, and that's more than anybody in any civic organization in the world has built. That's because my life was touched. Somebody, some adults, wanted to make a difference, and they stopped and helped me. I went from stuttering to being a, a speech maker, to talking, to class president. I couldn't believe it. And now I'm here advocating for our youth, and I'm asking you to join in. Let's do something and let's make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's what, that's what it's all about. We have to make a change. Isn't that what we hey, want? Herb, Herb, don't, 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 no, you can turn, turn back, look, come here for a second, handsome. Right. We want to take a <laughs> you can come back here for a second, handsome, um, because um, there's some questions I'd like to ask you before you, before you step away. Um, my first, welcome to the D, I love it. What made you start the organization that you have, please? Um, 
it, in reaction to a lot of thefts from HVAC off my roofs, I had two choices. One, to move and forget it. The other one was to fight back. And I said, I'm fighting back. You know, my back is against the wall, but I'm not going to allow the criminals, the thieves, to run me out of the city. This is my city. Now, you have understood $2 billion worth of property here in Los, in Los Angeles, in Detroit. You know, I have closed $2 billion in worth of deals. You know, a billion of that was Motor City Casino. I was the former chairman of Motor City. I created the casino industry in Detroit. Also, I've done a lot of major projects, such as Woodbridge Estates for 100 millions, uh, you know, St. Regis, Hunters Ridge, Republic Development Portfolio Reduction. So I've done some rather large transactions, and they've totaled up to $2 billion in terms of deals that I've done. Well, I had an opportunity to look over the city from, um, I was at, John, where were we with, with your offices? Is this is the gentleman you were telling me when you were pointing out all the buildings? Is this this the guy? Right. If you look out of John's window, there are some developments we have this in the downtown area that we've had for several years. Now I'm thinking about moving, right? Okay, I'll so, take care of you, baby. Oh, oh, that's you see, you see, took the words right about my mouth. That, that's what I, you said. The one thing, take care of me, because we 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 as a community, as a, as African Americans around the world. Right. People don't know that we as African Americans do things. People think that the only way you can be famous or popular is to be in front of the camera, behind the camera, and you're showing the world that you can make a difference and not have to be in front of the camera. And in a field and in a realm where we're not touchy. A lot of us, when, we, when I was growing up, it wasn't go to real estate school. It wasn't learn, it was you know be a lawyer, be a doctor, or be a nurse. What made you choose this field? You know, when I grew up, uh, people moved out of my community into better neighborhoods, and it, was, it occurred to me they would never come back and help little kids like me escape. Mm -hmm. So I remember on the corner saying, if I, if I ever get out of this place, I'm going to come back and redevelop my community. So I was hooked at the age 12. And it's very important for parents to hook their kids, kids early, give them something to visualize, to do, give them a burning desire. So that desire was, was put in my heart when I was 12 years old, and the only thing I ever wanted to do was come back and redevelop my community. So having that in my mind, it all led to where I'm at now. So actually, your mind was your vision board. My mind was my vision board, and without a vision, you're not going to succeed. So it is important for the parents to encourage the kids to get a vision. Their kids have got to have a vision at an early age. It is an obligation of the parents to encourage that. They shouldn't be like, I don't know what I want to do. You know, they should know. I knew one thing, that I wanted a briefcase, a suit and a tie that had a lot of money in it. I knew that much. You know, and I knew that I wanted to redevelop my community. I wasn't, I could have taken some different routes, but real estate seemed to be the very best route. It met all those criteria. It was money. I could wear a suit. I could have a briefcase. I could have contracts and money in it. So that worked. Thank you so very much. And now before you leave, I'm going to get your information because you have to show me you need to put some of those dollars into my company. Okay, dear. You got a deal. You heard that, right? I, you you see, that. That's how I do it. I make you do it on camera. Yeah. You, you're going to give me some sponsorship dollars for my show, right? Yes, ma'am, if you say so. There it is. It's done. Transformation, it is so. And that's, and that's the transformation. That's how you do it. You have to say what you want, whether it's a... Whether it's a car, whether it's a home, whatever you guys are out there thinking about or dreaming about or want, put it in the universe. Say it. If you want to drive, if you want to drive a Bentley, then close your eyes and drive a Bentley. When I'm in, when I'm on the metro in LA and I'm going to a red carpet event in my four thousand dollar gal, I'm with limousine drivers. Okay? I perceive and see what I want in the future because I say it. The next person, oh thank you, that was her. Oh, we we have is he coming up? Okay. Okay. So, and then, okay. I want you to do just okay. now, or no. at the. Well, after, after, after. after okay. Come. This is John Crawford. Uh, well, how did? Uh, why? Well, why did we? Who, who picked up his? Who, who picked up his award? That's not John. That's John. No. John Conyers' staff came earlier. Oh, you. Cro you know what? You, you. You know. I thought. You know. I got chrome. I thought it was. It was chrome nut. I get the donut. You know. I'm hungry still. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I got it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Don't leave you. The whole with the vision boards. Okay. Okay. So we'll just take. Oh, okay. No problem. Thank you so very much. Just hold one second. So John, John, not chrome, chrome nut because I'm hungry. John Cromer. Come on up, Mr. Cromer. John, John. and we're also, we're gonna, I'm going to, let me introduce. Uh, let me okay, so, uh, let me see. No, put it back on. No, I'm just playing. Keep it off. Okay, Dr. Princess Odelia will introduce Mr. Cromer.
Yes, yes. I, I, I want to say, first of all, John Cromer has been, I don't know if you guys heard about the second chances with um, the second chances law. Well, ex-offenders usually don't have a second chance, okay? Not until there was John Cromer. And then John Cromer came on the scene, and as a result of his life story, which I'll allow him to tell his story, he had rejection after rejection as a result of what crimes or whatever, his history. And he went to fight for it. He's been public. You've probably seen him a lot on Let It Rip, because he's always on Let It Rip. And he's always um, standing for the community. And actually, as a matter of fact, he's getting ready to run for councilman. So let's give him a hand. So this is councilman elect, con uh, Councilman elect John Cromer. Yes. And also, I want to say he's, he's been very instrumental in the True Purpose um, um, team and also um, speaking at the transformation assemblies to thousands of kids in Detroit, sharing his story and empowering. And every time we've called on Mr. Cromer, he's been there. And I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Delia. I really appreciate the work that you do in our community. And I want to tell you that I am um, a witness that transformation, it is so. Uh, crime is a rapid, a very serious issue in our city. Um, I know a lot of us uh, have been victimized by crime, whether your house was broken into, your car was stolen, you were, your kids were, uh, whatever, whatever the case was, we, we are not strangers when it comes to crime in the city of Detroit. However, uh, most of the people that are going to jail and prison, they're going to be coming out one day. I think it makes sense for us as a community to create ways that will improve the quality of life for these individuals that are coming out, ultimately improving the quality of our lives. Uh, as Dr. Dillio said, I do have a testimony. I did 13 years in prison for shoplifting. I've been home now for about 11 years. Uh, I served 13 years. I stole a pair of gym shoes and a set of bed sheets from Sears at Oakland Mall, my third offense of shoplifting. I used to be a crackhead thief, and I shoplifted to support that habit. And I did my time in prison. They sent me to prison for two and a half to 15 years, and I ended up doing 13 years because the parole board, which I want to take this moment to say thank you to Governor Snyder, who is uh, t making an effort to revamp the parole board, to uh, make it where people can serve the minimums and then get out of prison uh, to get a job and to become productive members of society to provide for our families. And that's what my whole goal was. Eleven years ago, when I came home from prison, I had come across a law. It was called Ban the Box Ordinance. A Ban the Box Ordinance allows the city to mandate that the criminal record question, you know that question on the job application that asks you if you've ever been convicted of a crime? Well, some cities across the country have eliminated that question. They took it off their applications, off their city job applications, and also all their vendors, like in the city of Boston, Massachusetts. In Boston, Massachusetts, for instance, they have 50,000 vendors that get contracts with the city of Boston. And so they made this rule that says that if you get business, if you do business with the city of Boston, then you have to take that criminal record question off of the job applications to help us combat crime and recidivism in our community. And so Boston, Massachusetts did the best. And I want to say, I want to say thank you to the sister from California because Oakland, California also took steps to remove the criminal record question off their job applications to give people a second chance. I don't know how we expect for people to stay out of trouble without a job. How can he or she financially contribute to their families if we would not give them an opportunity to do so? And if they don't have that opportunity to get a job and to financially contribute to their families, they have no other, no other recourse but to resort to the behavior that got them in trouble in the first place. Because they thought they were a good dope man, they're going to go out there and sell some dope to buy some pampers and milk for their kids. They're going to go out there and rob somebody to pay their cell phone bill and to pay their rent because they have to survive. And it is not smart for us to think that they're going to come out here and follow the rules without a source of income. 
So I was able to make that plea to our Detroit City Council, our former Detroit City Council. And yes, I am going to make a run for Detroit City Council next year. I'm going to run at large. There's a special election that I plan to become involved in. Uh, the City Council has to, uh, they did appoint one person, I believe her name is Janae Ayers, or she was the last person, they, the City Council members appointed her to take the last seat. Well, her seat is up for election. She has to be confirmed by the voters, and I plan to challenge her and her run because there has to be a voice for Pookie and Ray Ray. I am so sick of not being able to have a voice for Pookie, Pookie and Ray Ray. They have no other recourse but to go out there and commit a crime. I want to be a city council member so I can be a voice, an advocate, so I can tell the companies and employers that come here and do business in our city that they must be sensitive to this issue, that there are people, that are families that are suffering in our city because they have family members that cannot financially contribute to their families. In order to make a transformation, we have to be dedicated to that transformation. And I thank God for people like Dr. Adelia that has made transformation, to the, has brought it to the forefront so people can understand that it is possible. It's not only possible, it is reality. And reality is there when you put yourself in a position to succeed. You make the choice. And I want to be on city council to be able to make that choice for my brothers and sisters and my families who are suffering in this city that are not having the representation that they need to succeed. Transformation is so. Thank you. Transformation is so. Okay, come on. Now, do you want to switch sides? No, I'm gonna stay. Actually, this is my better side, and I think that might be your better side. I think you got all your sides are good. Oh, you see, you see that? <laughs> you think I see him push that baby in here? I ain't gonna flirt. I'm not gonna flirt. I, he ain't gonna suck me. He ain't gonna Detroit suck me. He don't suck me in on Detroit. Um, for an individual to have gone through the trials and tribulations that you've had, and for me to be honest, I've never actually stood this close to anyone who's actually ever been to, to prison. How did that change you? Prison gave me an opportunity to have some alone time with God. That's how I tell people. And I tell some, I mentor about 60 young men in our city, the ages of 14 to 26. And I always tell them, if you demonstrate behavior that says that you want to go to jail or prison, and if you do that around me, I'm going to help you get there to jail or prison because I am not going to tolerate anybody around me breaking the law. But if you want to break the law and go to jail and prison, I'm going to help you get there because I am not going to interfere with your time with God because that's your alone time with God. And that's how I looked at my prison time. It was my alone time with God. It was time for me to get myself in order to get up from the mess that I had made in my life, to stand up and come and transform into the person that I am today. So now how do we, how do we get them before they get to that point. How do you stop that youth from stealing those pair of sneakers? What are you doing so that you don't have to send them to jail for a long time with God. They can just go to their bedrooms and have that time. Well, one of the things that we did through my company, Lola Max Management LLC, we created a an, an, an community outreach, which Dr. Adelia has been a very, uh, the Bonnefield Group has been a partner with us called Toys Making Impacts. Toys Making Impacts, where we take kids 14 and under, and we give them, we make sure we ensure that they have the joy of Christmas. We give them Christmas toys. We give them winter coats and scarves and gloves. We give them the Christmas that they need because I believe that kids that uh, are deprived, they resort to kleptomania. They develop a disease called kleptomania that my kid got the jacket that your kid cannot afford, so your kid goes out to the mall and shoplift the jacket that my, my son has because he wants to be that peer pressure that brings that kleptomania on. They want to justify not having everything that everyone else has. So I think the point is that we have to create more mentoring. There needs to be more after-school programs. We need more people like me that have gone to prison, women and men that have served their time in jail, to come back and be a testimony to these young people, to give them their, to tell them their stories and how they can avoid these pitfalls in life. I have a question, and I'm going to ask you this. We're going to act like there's not a thousand people in this room right now. But is prison like Oz? Because that's all I've ever seen. Um, no, it isn't. It's, it's, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. It's, it's close to it. Whoever, whoever the writers are for the show Oz, that I would have to say those writers have had some experiences in prison because they get real close to it without all the drama in it. If you just take some of the drama out, yes, it is that type of you have those type of occurrences in the prison. 
Well, I'm glad you had your conversation with God and came out and now the person you are and have a beautiful child. What's your child's name? His name is Jonathan, Jonathan Cromer, and I'm John Cromer. Uh, I want you to Google me. You can go to my YouTube page and look at some of the videos and some of the progress that we've been able to make in our city in terms of second chances. In fact, next Tuesday from 10 to 2, there will be a very large job fair at the Northwest Activity Center for individuals who have criminal records. So they may want to pass. I don't know how long, how soon this information is going to be out to the public, but just for a reminder, there will be a returning citizens reentry job fair and resource fair at the Northwest Activity Center located at 18100 Myers uh, next Tuesday, the 27th of October from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. So I'm asking every ex-offender, because I'm going to be there, okay? I'm not, I'm not a sponsor of this event. I saw it on the news. I saw, I, I saw uh, 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 Prosecutor Barbara McQuaid making the announcement on Channel 7, and I helped to share the information with the public. And I'm certainly hoping that every ex-offender will come out to this event. So that even if there's not enough jobs for everybody, to let us see the magnitude of what we have here, we need to get Pookie and Ray Ray out of the attic, out of the basement, out of the spare bedroom of their grandmother's or sister's or friend's house and get them to that job fair dressed like Superman or Wonder Woman to get that job. Put on a shirt or a tie, a dress, skirt, pants, suit, whatever women, dress up like Wonder Woman. She didn't need no job, but she still twirled around until she got it right. Superman ran into a phone booth and changed clothes, so he got it right. He did not need a job, but he had enough sense to realize that he had to change clothes for an occasion. So I'm certainly hoping that our ex-offenders would change their clothes for this occasion and come out and get hired. Come change your mindset, your clothes, and everything else. Tell them how they can follow you. Well, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter, John Cromer, uh, J.W. Cromer, Detroit. I'm also on Facebook. I have three Facebook pages. You can go to John Cromer's other page to be added because the other pages are full. And I certainly look forward to our friendship that we will be able to share information and improve the quality of life for so many people in our city. Our city is changing. Our city has changed. And our city has more changing to do. And I think with people like you and myself and other people in this, in this, at this event, if we rally together, and hold hands and move forward that we'll be able to make this transformation a reality for so many people. Transformation is so. It is so. Transformation thank is so. Transformation. Thank you, John Cryer. Cromer. Cromer, Cromer. I'm sorry. You know, give me a Cromer and I'll get it right. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> then, in fact, we're going to, you have a card too I before you? Have a card. All right. Thank I you. Have a city council card that lets people know that when I win, uh, run for city council and win, I am going to work every day to help remove barriers to employment. For people with criminal records, they have to make sure that they're employed and self-sufficient. That's what we have to do because everyone deserves second chances, and to have those type of limitations on you. So, Mr. Cromer, thank you so very much. All right. All right. Um, I guess it's the time for me to. Um, we're going to be. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, guys. We're going to take some pictures before some people have to leave, and then um, I'm going to come and uh, deliver the, my closing remarks and then turn you over to Dr. Princess Odelia and with her closing remarks because I want to explain to you what really brought me here and the changes that I'm going to help with that. So, guys, just take a second. We're going to take some pictures. So if you're looking on Periscope and you just see some dead air, just sit there and wait and, or just because I'm not turning on Periscope because it'll have to start all over again. So I'll be right back, okay? Hey.
get everybody with that big smile on their face. That Detroit smile. And that LA, New York smile. Thank you, because he said from LA, I'm from New York, I can give him one. <laughs> Perfect. Got it. Great Thank job. you. Transformation is dope. Transformation is dope. Transformation is dope. Thank you guys. See, this is what it takes. I, I do want to this is what it takes. It takes the constant energy. We get ready. She's gonna do her final. Have a seat. All right. So we're back uh, once again. My name is Cassandra Calloway. Uh, tell, ask him to, hey guys, have a seat. I listen to. Yeah. Um, once again, my name is Cassandra Calloway. Dr. Princess Odeo asked me to come to be the host of this incredible event. And with, like I said earlier, the transforming that I've been doing with myself, my show, I just felt that it was so apropos. So I have a few words um, that <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here. At first I thought President Obama wrote all of his speeches, and then I found out that he gets help. So I got help from a friend of mine, Ernest, and um, when we were talking about what I wanted to say and how I wanted to express my feelings about coming to Detroit. Detroit, you have certainly have been challenged, your challenges over the years. You've been bathed in the light of victory. You've grieved in the shadow of defeat. As a country, we celebrated beside you in the best of times, and we wept with you in the worst. But Detroit, never forget that you have birthed the culture of some great thinkers and inventors in society. People that have influenced the shape and enlightened the world as we know it now for which a world that we want to change, and the change starts with you. Now, I could stand here and name drop like Henry Ford, who defined Detroit as the car maker of the world, or legendary Barry Gordy, who changed the music industry and gave soul to our ears. Francis Ford Coppola permanently altered how we look and view movies. Now, you know that guy, Marshall Matthews. He's also known as Eminem. He changed, brought Detroit back on the map with an extraordinary hip-hop music. Now, I could stand here all day and drop off famous names, but I won't, because today is about the future, not about the past. Today is about you, Detroit. And while you must remember where we've come from, we can all change to where we're going in the future. So it starts today, and it starts with all of us. Now, I name these people not just because they're common, names to you and us, but they also have something in common with each and every one of us. They're thinkers. They were born here in Detroit, and they wanted to make a change. They, uh, they surrounded themselves with like-minded people who had the same yearning and the aspirations for a greater state of mind and capacity here in Detroit. I want you to imagine, all of you people that are listening to me right now, that mm, th uh, the gasping, compelling notion that a change can start with home base. Now, putting this into action is up to us. That means we have to make the movement. You are here with this city, and this city in its factories, and it's not just about a house that's over there that's been rebuilt on Grand Boulevard. It's about more than that. Detroit stands at the edge of making great decisions today. Does it continue as it does now? Does it continue as it is now? Or do we make a decision for the fiber to create a better new life here in Detroit? Detroit has unfairly been, visual, has unfairly been the visual aid for some of society's cruelty and anger that fills this country. You've been improperly labeled as dirty, as lazy, as criminal filth and degenerates. You have been the butt of society's injustice. It is unfair. We need to change the truth of Detroit today. The truth is being hidden from the country about Detroit. I, you see, I know. I know that Detroit isn't the problem. It's the experience and the, and, and the afflictions that the police brutality of homelessness, of gang warfare, of poverty, of employment, like many other cities in the United States. But you are all here today to elevate the truth, to shine a light that which not cannot be silenced. You are here today to keep the, you're here to, today to keep the truth from being uncovered of the watered down, muddled abuse, red tape, the greedy politicians and corporations. And even though all of this has happened, Detroit, you are still here. 
Detroit is not a horrible place because it wants to be horrible. It's angry at the lack of funding. It's fed up with its brutality of forces of gangs through the police brutality and obsession in people treating us because we don't look like them. They want to keep us oppressed. Why? It's tired of the harshness and hunger and the pain of poverty. It makes no sense that people are this hungry and, people are, and as many buildings are destroyed here in Detroit. It's tired of being wounded by the financial crippling of unemployment. How many people want jobs? People want jobs. They're out there. It is not Detroit. It's not that Detroit started this ridiculousness in the country. Detroit has been the victim of this for a very long time. It is hard for it is hard to stay stay it's hard to stay up when you're constantly being put down. It's rough it's it's tough for one to rise when five are making them fall. But together as a collective Detroit and more capable than any of those conflicting forces, Detroit, I tell you, we no longer are a victim. We are no longer the short end of the rope. We have here today given you a knot, a tie, and a cord to hang on to. Detroit isn't going anywhere but up, and I mean we're going up. We are here to work with you to learn how to change in the midst, change their mentality, change your self-awareness, and change in a way that others are not prepared for. Some folks have left Detroit and some have stayed. For those who are still here, we are here to talk about transformation. We are here to incite change, to invoke creativity. New thoughts, new creative visions, visions for Detroit. Transformation starts from the beginning and the present is very, and this present is very moment to see. The road ahead, walking in those shoes, work clothes and being, having a task at hand. Gandhi said it well many, many years ago. If we want to see something different, we ourselves must be the change for the followers. Let me repeat that. Gandhi said, if we want to see something different, we ourselves must be that change for the betterment. Be the change, Detroit. Be the leader, not the follower. Detroit has not gone out, is not out of the game for too long. It is time to stop warming the bench and get on the field. Get that ball, run like hell until you reach your goal or make that shot. Be a lion who leads the prey. Let's not stop hurting, let's stop hurting others and start healing ourselves. I don't care about the disposition of anybody else in this room, but for us to let the world know that Detroit is beautiful. This city is going to make a change. In 2016, I expect that this movement is going to be bigger and better and to see more people. So let's stop looking back at the past. Today, it's time to look forward. From this day on, it's about transformation. From this day forth, it's not about the old Detroit. It's about the new Detroit. And what the new Detroit's gonna be about is love and affirmation and following the law of attraction. If we take all of this energy in one room and give it to the world and let them know, Detroit is not going to take this anymore. You're not going to beat us up. You're not going to put us down. You're not going to make us seem like we are the worthlessness of this world. Because Detroit, I stand with you and I say, we are better than what the world thinks. We are better than what they put on television. Because what they put on television and they show Detroit is nothing but bad. And today shows them that there's nothing but good here. We can transform. We can walk and let everybody know that we can stop killing each other. We can stop senseless murders. We can stop poverty. We can stop homelessness if we all work together. So I want you guys to do what I do on a daily basis. I wake up every morning and I ask God, I tell God what I am grateful for, why I am here, and what he can do for me, and how he can change my life. So you do the same. I want you to put your vision boards together. I want you to put your visions on paper. Write it down. Give it to the universe. Give it to God. Let it happen because I'm here to tell you testimony of faith. I come from New York. Now, I wasn't, where I grew up, it wasn't poverty. We were middle class. And I didn't have to worry about gangs until we got into high school. At 17, I won the Miss Black Teen New York pageant, and I had a group of girls that went to school with me, surrounded me, and was going to beat me up and cut my face over a beauty pageant. Now, thank God the security guards were right behind me and saved my life. Within three days or four days, we were out of the community because it started to change. I go back to that community today, and I see those same 
older women, because they're not young girls anymore, and when they look at me, they want to ask me for an autograph. And they say, we've been watching you. We see what you're doing. And I say to them, I say, thank you. You know why? Because you made me the person I am today. You made me not fear anything. If I see a group of women coming up, I know they're not going to touch me, because just like God had me in that situation, God's got me down. So the same young lady who told me if I walk back down the block in these shoes, she's going to take them. When I saw her with her six kids standing on the corner, not only did I give her my shoes, I bought them food. Because here's the deal. God's got me. In Detroit, God's got you. Transformation, it is so. My name is Cassandra Calloway. I'm going to give you now to the lady that put this all together, Dr. Princess Odelia. Hey. And um, my speech writer is probably going to kill me because I skipped some stuff, but we, I, we got the purpose, right? We understand the change. We understand what we're supposed to do. This, this woman, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, via doing f several different internet radio shows in the process of doing my own, and I understood her wisdom. I understood her, I think, more than she understood herself. I asked her to join my team and bring her wisdom to my radio station, and she did so last year. When she asked me to come to Detroit to do this, I said, without a doubt, because I see your vision. I see what you're trying to do. And when people tell us that we can't do anything, it's, it's, I laugh at them. Because to be standing here now, there are people right now that didn't think this was going to happen. And to see Dr. Princess Odelia and I together in this one room is a testimony for those haters to hate, hate, hate. Because I love, love, love me some Dr. Princess Odelia. Dr. O, what you got to say? That was, wasn't that a powerful speech? Wow, I did not expect that. Thank you so much, and thank you to the contributors to that speech as well. Today has been absolutely awesome, and I, I want to thank, um, I want to thank Herb Strather and his contribution of Venue. I want to thank BDM Transportation. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for you, BDM, came through like, I, I don't even know what to say. Just amazing. Um, uh, but he's a, the owner is a man who believes in the vision of Detroit's transfer information. I want to thank Zellman Unlimited, Mr. John Hill. Can everybody give John Hill a round of applause? John Hill is also the director of Take Back, uh, director of Transforming Detroit TV show. He is the reason that I got started in television. He asked me to come on his show, and before I was done with the show, he told he said I was going to be the city of the next talk show host for the city of Detroit, and begin to introduce me to all of the city council members walking around introducing me. Oh, this is our next uh, talk show host, and from that day, I've been on a couple of networks including a Scripps Network, um, Channel TV 20, and we will be coming back um, next year. So I just, I want to thank you, John Hill, for everything. He's been here with, oh my God, the videos and just sowing seed. So I want to I be great. I want to thank you for that. Let's give him another round of applause. And I, I want to um, give thanks to all of our, our great sponsors. Number one, Cassandra Calloway, Calloway. Let's again give her a round of applause. I mean, just a, a symbol of excellence in, in this entire process. Um, I, I saw Cassandra as a celebrity first before I knew that she had a heart. And I'm not interested in a, in a celebrity. I don't care. I don't care about your name. I've had a couple of people who opted out to come to the event because they wanted to be sure that their fame was noticed. And I had to tell them. I said some words that I won't say today, but I said a couple of things. And one of them happened to be, this, this is not your form. Because if you can't come here with the vision, the collective vision and support, then that's not what we need here. We're not trying to be about your name. This is a community, and this is critical. Detroit is in need of this. The world is in need of it. I don't know about you, but what inspired this, the launch officially like this, 
so that we can continue with the vision and create. This is just, this collective vision here is the start. We're gonna, it'll grow and people will contribute and maybe add some more things to the city of Detroit's vision. But right now we've got great four items that embodies just about everything that we all desire. But I went to a town hall meeting and I was very disappointed. I was disappointed because it was, it was another motivational form. Everybody talked about what was the issue. And I did not hear a solution. And I, was, I had enough. I've had enough. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of it. I've had enough of us talking about and parading about celebrating all of the crime. If we really understood the power that we have, then we would understand that every time you repost something, every time you share something for somebody to laugh and go, ooh, ah, and to create, create and promote the negative energy, then you are fueling the flame for everything that you say that you don't like. So in order for us to make a transformation, we have to first be willing to have a new perspective about everything that's going on around us. And the first thing for change is what? What do they say? You have to first accept and own. You gotta own it. Accept responsibility. Once you accept responsibility for the part that you play in it, now we can move on. And guess what? I have news for you. We all play a major part, favorably or not. If you're the one that's reposting a million times garbage, I have news for you. You're a contributor because you're powerful. You are the creator. and You're motivating this situation. I have news for you. If you're the one that's saying nothing, you are in conspiracy to everything that's happening because it's really up to us. What are you doing? Don't talk about it, be about it. Let's not just have a form all the time about the negativity. Change is now. Then what are we going to do? We need to activate the tools. The theme song is one man can change the world and that's the truth. It takes one person for you to have an idea and a vision. I'll tell you when I founded the Global World Peace True Purpose Movement in 2010, I had lost everything that I had from the multi-million dollar investment and consulting firm to the nearly million dollar home that I built in Island Lake. Lost it all. And I was going through my valley in life. We have the ups and the downs. I was homeless. I was, as I was driving down the street to get out of the car, to go to the video man, where I can get all excited about this transformation, the car was rolling because I had somebody who didn't have faith in the vision and downed me when they were the ones who I helped when I was up. That happens, but you've got to keep it moving. So I have to tell you that from that place, from that valley place, this mission was created. So that ought to tell you something. You understand, you don't have to have anything. My company went from local to global when I had no tangible resources that somebody could see. When every bird person that, who I thought were my friend had begun to turn their back on me, when my family was laughing at me and said I must have been a fool, smart as you are, you must want this. But they didn't understand I was going through my life's journey and it's all good. You have to know that it's really all good. You have to understand that life is very consistent for us all. There's balance, there's ups and downs, there's on and off. You, as beautiful as your bodies are, you release that disgusting toxic every day, hopefully, right? And sometimes it's a good experience. So everything, you have to go through the process. You don't get mad about going to the restroom. You say, it's the process. You go and you do what you do and you keep it moving. That's the opportunity that life gives us when circumstances happen. We have to ask that's that key question. What am I to experience in this moment now? Repeat that after me. What am I to experience in this moment now? That's the key question. Not, darn it, I can't believe that happened, man, and then go and talk about it to somebody and get all mad and just keep on with the story. 
fueling the flame and the fire. And my daughter just told me I have no nothing else in front of me. I think she said that. I'll, I, you know what? They also coach me in my speaking. I'm known to talk a lot. So they tell me to wrap it up. So <laughs> I just want to say thank you for this. And understand that everything that, that happens in your life is for a reason. You were given your story so that you can come out and be prosperous with it. So now you got to determine what are you to do with what you were given. Can I get a? Amen. All right. Okay. So continuing on with our sponsors, I want to thank, um, again, Blightbusters, John George over District 1. He is actually the fiduciary for Bountiful Opportunities Group. And John George, oh, man, if you look at the Artist Village and um, Java House, um, they've done so much on Grand River and Lasser, um, really turned a community that was completely just nobody wanted to go there. That was the Compton of Detroit, one of the Comptons in Detroit, right? But now people are are walking around and, and being a part of a great change of transformation. I want to thank John George and Alicia George over at Blightbusters, Strather Academy again, and also Marvis Burns, The Insider's Guide to a Free Ride. If you are interested in having some college experience and think that money is your issue, let me tell you, Marvis Burns, who um, a young man from the east side of Detroit, single mother, he had a single mom and had no money to go to school. He knew this, but what he was was resilient in his search for, for, the, for his scholarships. And he himself attained over $500,000 in college scholarships for his undergrad and over 80,000 for his grad. So he wrote a book about it, The Insider's Guide to a Free Ride. Made it real simple for you to follow. There goes my grandson. Okay, so it, this is what it's up. Uh, you, he's the one, you probably saw him online, who got us all excited about transformation. Okay, so I want you to check out that book if you are wanting to go to college and need money. The Hard Rock Cafe, um, st also Starbucks, JP1, Comerica Bank, Wayne County Community College, Lola Max with, uh, yes, that's right, John Cromer. Also Humble Designs, phenomenal work. They have been furnishing formerly homeless um, people, families in Detroit, and they go in and revamp your, I mean, go in and put brand new furniture in your home from top to bottom um, once you've been in, in a system of uh, homelessness, a situation of homelessness. We also want to thank um, Akil Alvin um, Entertainment because they are also very instrumental in taking pictures, and, and they have done our wonderful commercials for the fundraising. And also, they are contributor to the um, commercial for the transformation, youth transformation movement. We also want to thank team, team Battlefield. And we also want to thank, again, Zellman Unlimited, Vanessa McLean in the UK. Um, it's in your story. Find her online. You see the information here on your cards. This is your little souvenir. I want you to join us on Facebook, on Twitter, and join us also on Instagram picture take pictures and and take a picture of your vision board you create that vision board you write it and make it clear i don't care what you think you don't have you have everything know that know that and people will look it's i can't believe they did that and even when it gets rough stand on it that's the key the key is you realizing your own power you really do you were created with that and it's nothing wrong with it barbara hoffmeister in germany um, to be or not to be, the choice is yours. I want you to check these people out, and you can look at the information on the card as well. Olive Anwula, um, youth leader and executive director of Diaspora, and they are also um, all True Purpose team members. I want to thank you all for coming here. Thank you all for being the, come on. You guys are now founders of this global youth transformation movement, the vision tour that we're getting ready to just take by leaps and bounds so i want you to instagram i am transforming detroit so instagram it get your little picture say hey and do transformation it is so do what is that stuff called that they got the videos real quick net of vine vine oh, I, I was about to say netflix <laughs> wait, wait, wait. see what Ooh, i know that just tells us <laughs> he said netflix <laughs> what's that Transformation, <laughs> it is so right between scandal and the C 
secret. <laughs> hey, you know what? Whatever, man. That's why you hired me. I know, man. I just don't know. I, I'm trying my best. Well, it's not Netflix. It's, it's called, what's it, what's it called? It's, it's, it's Vine. It's Instagram. Oh, oh Vine. It's Twitter. Twitter. It's um, Periscope. It's, there's so many social media. That you can do those little quick videos? That's, that's Vine. That's Vine. It's, that's Vine. Second video. See, I thought it was Periscope that you do quick videos. No, Periscope you can do for hours. You can, so like right now, my battery died. For the last hour, they were watching us on Periscope Live. Are you serious? Yeah, she's younger than me, and I got to teach her social media. But that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Teach yeah, you one know, each one. Teach one each one. <laughs> well, you know what? We want to get um, your feedback before you guys leave. I would like to hear what you thought about this and how you felt about this movement. I appreciate you guys. Love you all. And let's say, oh, we got to do the vision again. She's going to lead us. Can we do? We got to. Can, 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 can we? Can we? Can we, well, you sure can. We, I want you guys to stand, please. And let's, let's, let's stand up. Once again, I want to thank Dr. Princess, but don't stand up in my camera because you just stood up and you said, hey, you, hey, you blocking my shot. You can't block my own, you can't, you can't block my own, my own camera. <laughs> What's your name? Edwin. Edwin. Don't make me, look, be like, y'all see where you blocked my shot right there? That was Edwin. No, my shoe. <laughs> no, because in Detroit, in Detroit, they might throw it back. <laughs> We're not trying to, I want you to throw back a man, don't throw back a shoe. <laughs> Once again, I want to thank the Global Bountiful Group for bringing us out, for bringing me out here, to, uh, Dr. Princess Odelia. Um, you don't have to wait next year. Anytime you call, I'm here for you. Um, just don't book me on a 5 o'clock flight. No, actually, actually, dude, I, I actually, actually, every time I come, I want to come at 5 in the morning. No, I'm lying. I'm just, don't even say that because she'll do it. So let's stand, and we're going to say collectively as Dr. Princess Odelia is uh, getting our song together. Once I want to say again that um, not only is transformation is so, but believing in yourselves. If anyone ever tells you you can't do something, you look them square in the face and tell them they're a liar because there's nothing that you guys can do. Whether you just want, if you want to, if you want to be the, if you want to be the best washing car squeegee person on the corner of Grandville and, and Greenfield, Grand River and Greenfield, I'm not going to come knock and squeeze you out your hand. I'm going to let you do your job. Okay. I want you guys to be the best people you can possibly be. No dream is limited, limitless. Your imagination, any, trust me, anything you can think about doing, you can do. Anything you ask God for, you can get. So if you say, God, I want that pretty young lady over there with the pink lipstick and that cute outfit, and I want to be my wife and truly mean it, <clears throat> God will give it to you. If you want that home, that car, that job, if you just want a clean heart, if you just want to wake up every morning and just love yourself, then just ask God. Just ask God. Just love yourself more than anything else in this world. Because if you love yourself, then nothing else. Love yourself, that's like loving God. So think about that. Think about how you treat yourself and what you do with yourself and what you put in your body. Think about, think about your temple as God. What would God do? That's how you work it. Okay, because one man is what? One man can what? One woman can change the world as well. We got that song? Let me tell you some two women right here, three women. Okay, this is, this is you know, three women and a baby. We can. Oh Lord, Siri, Siri, play one man. I bet you. Go ahead, watch this. I bet you we get a Barbara Streisand song. <laughs> Zuri, I want you to play. Just, just hit play. Just hit play. Oh, just hit play? Yes, ma'am. Press, right. Press play. We're going to collectively say the collective vision of Detroit. Okay, guys, we'll start with number one. Come on, guys. We're doing a reading. Just two seconds and we'll let you guys go. Add the move two and a half. Oh, you <laughs> three. Okay, we don't. We can add the music later. Let's just do it. You guys got it. All right. All right. Let's go collectively. Number one. Are we ready? And Detroit 
is the pioneer in the movement of global transformation. Once again, Detroit is the pioneer in the movement of global transformation. Number two, Detroit is one of the safest cities in the world. Detroit is one of the safest cities in the world. Number three, Detroit's communities are beautiful, full of happy citizens, adults, and youth who are living their true purpose. And number four, Detroit is the number one tourist city in the world. If Detroit can do it, anyone can. Transformation, it is so. And you guys, we want you to say it every single day. If you can, let's go put it in your mantra every day. Every day. If Detroit can do it, anybody can. Transformation, it is so. We thank you for coming to the fourth annual Transformation Global Tour Rally and March here at 154. 400 Grand River in the Obama Room. Thank you guys so very much for your patience and time, and we will see you soon. Good night.